Hi, you're watching Helen Explains Me and White Supremacy by Layla F. Saad. The final day of the first week is day six, and um, this covers you and white exceptionalism. Now, if you haven't watched my introduction video, um, then please do so. Um, click up here, I'll link to it up here, and I'll also link to it down in the description. Um, I really recommend you watch that one first before you get into this one because I'm going to just jump straight in. I'm not going to give you really any introduction because that video says it all. And this week in part one, we're going to be covering the basics. So that includes you and white privilege, you and white fragility, you and tone policing, you and white silence, you and white superiority, and you and white exceptionalism. Now, if some of these terms don't ring a bell, then that's absolutely fine because we're going to be going through them. I'm going to give you a bit of definition and I'm going to read some extracts from the book and then also look at the questions that Layla suggests you reflect on. And even if these terms are really familiar to you, then it's always worth going over something again and you might learn something new as Layla's take is really direct, um, really well um, thought out and explained and just fantastic um, in helping you understand how these fit into the overall overarching white supremacy. The final day of the first week is day six and um, this covers you and white exceptionalism. So white exceptionalism is the belief that you as a person holding white privilege are exempt from the effects, benefits and conditioning of white supremacy and therefore the work of anti-racism does really not apply to you. So these are the people who think I'm not a racist. I'm one of the good ones. She says, it is not the right-wing nationalists and the overtly proud racists who carry a sense of white exceptionalism. They often wear their true beliefs for all to see. They're clear about who they are, what they stand for, and who they see as a threat. Rather, it is often the white liberals who believe that their progressive ideologies separate them from the racism of the extreme right. It is people with white privilege who, who believe that they are not an impediment to anti-racism, who, who carry white exceptionalism like a badge of honour. They can't mean me. I voted for Obama. I have black friends. I have partners who are BIPOC. My kids play with non-white kids. I don't even see colour. When they talk about racism and white supremacy, they must be talking about those other kinds of white people. Not me. I'm one of the good ones. But unfortunately, you've been conditioned into white supremacist ideology, whether you've realised it or not. So white exceptionalism, exceptionalism shows up every time you think, I don't do that. That doesn't apply to me. It... <laughs> It convinces you that you don't really need to do the work um, because you're already doing things. You don't need to dig deep because you're already progressive. But no, we all need to dig deep. Now this one I, I love and I was guilty of. White exceptionalism is a little voice that convinces you that you can read this book, but you do not have to do the work. That because you have an intellectual understanding of the concepts being presented here, you do not have, the dil you do not have to diligently write out your responses to the questions that you can just think about it in your mind and that is enough. Like, wow, that really hit me because I'd gone through the first five days and I really thought about the questions. I'd really, really like looked at them, but I hadn't written them down. That came along and I was like, huh, cool, go back to day one. <laughs> and I went back to day one and I started writing out my answers and interestingly writing them made me go deeper, maybe dig deeper and actually realise stuff that I hadn't thought about because thinking is just not enough. When you're doing when you're when you're doing this work, you have to go deep. You have to go give it a hundred percent. You can't just give it fifty percent and think about it. White exceptionalism is the belief that because you've read some anti-racism books and articles, listened to social justice based podcasts, watched documentaries and follow BIPOC activists and teachers, you know it all and do not need to dig deeper. No one should think that. No one knows it all. And especially if you're white, you have to, it's, it's, it's an ongoing journey. You have to put these things into practice. You, it's all very well reading all these books, but if you're not shouting out when you see something that's wrong, if you're not getting uncomfortable and sitting with that discomfort, then you're not doing it properly. White exceptionalism is the idea that you are somehow special. Yeah, you're not special. White exceptionalism is the hurt, not all white people response when BIPOC talk about white people's behavior. So I think this was the really crux of it. White exceptionalism is a particularly rampant is particularly rampant in progressive, liberal, spiritual white people because there is a belief that being these things makes you exempt or above it all. You are not. And the belief that you are makes you dangerous to BIPOC because you cannot see your own complicity and you will not listen when it is being reflected back to you. 
white exceptionalism for me, I think was it was a really eye opening one because um, like I don't think I'm I don't think I'm an exception, but maybe I can be a bit lazy with doing the work, and it made me realise that I just I need to not be lazy. I need to actively do this. So the prompts for day six, in what way have you believed that you are, exception, you are exceptional, exempt, one of the good ones or above the conditioning of white supremacy? In what ways have you acted out of a sense of white exceptionalism when in racial conversations with BIPOC? Uh, 